Hi students. Today we are going to discuss about the engineering chemistry unit 1 water chemistry or water technology. The second topic is the boiler feed water. Okay. What is boiler feed water? The water which is fed into the boiler is called boiler feed water. In which purpose we have to fed the water into the boiler? To production of the current. So boiler which is used to produce the current. That is the basic. So the boiler feed water should be free from all types of the impurities. For example, turbidity, oil, dissolved gases, alkali and hardness causing substances. So if the hard water obtained from the natural source is fed directly into the boiler, the following troubles may be occur. Suppose we have to add the water directly into the boiler, what will be happen? So boiler which easily some troubles occur. What are the troubles? Formation of the scale and the sludge. Then formation of the priming and the foaming like substances then caustic embrittlement then boiler corrosion so these are all the main troubles occur inside the boiler suppose we have to add the impurity water into the boiler or contaminate water into the boiler so boiler which is easily affected so another uh, name of the boiler troubles are called as the disadvantages of the using hard water into the boiler so we have to see one by one what is the meaning of scale, sludge, priming, foaming and caustic embrittlement and boiler corrosion one by one in the next slide. Okay. The first is the formation of the deposits. Deposits means scale and sludge in the boiler and heat exchanges. Another name of the boiler is called as the heat exchanges. When water is continuously converted into the steam in boiler or heat exchangers, the concentration of the dissolved salts in water increases progressively. So in generally, suppose we have to heat the water into the vessel, what will be happen? So at the time to time, the water which gases, water vapors are evolved and the concentration of the water increases. Suppose in that water containing any dissolved salts, in that salts are deposited on the bottom of the vessel. The same thing like as in the boiler also. We have to continuously heating the boiler. So the steam can be produced and uh, increases in the time. The concentration of the water increases and water containing any type of the salt which is deposited on the uh, walls of the boiler are bottom of the boiler. So when the concentration of the salts reaches their saturation point, they are thrown out in the form of precipitate on the inner wall of the boiler or heat exchanges. So once again I repeat, suppose we have to continuously heating in that boiler, if that boiler water containing any salts like calcium magnesium salts, calcium chloride magnesium chloride or calcium sulfate magnesium sulfate or any type of the salts which easily dissolved in that water and deposits on the inner walls of the boiler or bottom of the boiler uh, that is called as the scale or sludge. So the least soluble one gets precipitate first then highly uh, soluble naturing substances also Adherent on the boiler of the water. So here I 
given the two different uh, inner walls of the boiler so you have to see the first diagram that is sludge in boiler so inside of the boiler some lines here i given the lines represents the loose precipitate loose means easily soluble water soluble precipitate that is called as the loose precipitate so which can be easily removed from the boiler so the second diagram we are called as the scale scale in boiler suppose we have to heat the boiler that heat efficiency that means the precipitate or deposit on the inner wall of the boiler uh, this precipitate is very very hard so that we are called as the scale so hard means uh, we have to given some acidic uh, solution into that boiler we have to remove the scale producing or hardness producing substances from the boiler that is called as the hard precipitate so the hard precipitate uh, of the inner, inner wall of the boiler is called as a scale the loose precipitate are dissolved in the boiler water is called as the sludge so sludge means loose scale means hard okay some of the examples are given in the next slide so we will see one by one okay okay first sludge if the precipitate is loose and slimy it is called sludge the sludges are formed by the substances like magnesium chloride magnesium carbonate magnesium sulfate and calcium chloride so these salts which is easily into the easily soluble into the water so that we are called as the loose precipitate or slimy precipitate examples magnesium chloride calcium chloride magnesium carbonate and magnesium sulfate so magnesium chloride calcium chloride are the magnesium sulfate are the permanent hardness producing salt because uh, in magnesium chloride magnesium sulfate calcium chloride there is no carbonate which does not remove even at the boiling so that it is called a permanent hardness producing salt then you see the scale scale producing salt are adherent or deposit on the inner walls of the boiler if the precipitate forms hard and adherent coating on the inner walls of the boiler it is called a scale scale means hard okay then scales are formed by the substances like calcium bicarbonate calcium sulfate and magnesium hydroxide calcium bicarbonate is the temporary hardness producing salt uh, because it contains the carbonate then calcium sulfate is the permanent hardness producing salt and magnesium hydroxide so these are all the different uh, definitions for the excellent scale and different examples of the scale and sludge then another important comparison of the scale and the sludge or distinctions between scale and the sludge sludge means loose and the slimy precipitate non adherent coating with the precipitate in the inner walls of the boiler so sludge means the second letter l l means loose so loose slimy non adherent precipitate is called as the sludge Uh, in the scale scale is hard adherent coating inside of the boiler is called as a scale then second examples of the sludge magnesium carbonate magnesium chloride magnesium sulfate calcium chloride okay then scale producing substance calcium bicarbonate calcium sulfate then magnesium hydroxide so these are all the various examples of the sludge and scale so you have to Uh, write at least two to examples of the each one sludge and scale in the examination point of view then 
what are all the disadvantages of the sludge sludge is poor conductor of heat the excess of sludge formation decreases the efficiency of the boiler suppose if the water boiler water containing the higher amount of the sludge so in that sludge absorb the heat so there is the formation of the steam is get lost or very low so uh, the very good boiler which does not have any type of the sludge like substances that only we have to produce the 100 percentage uh, efficiency of the boiler and up to form the 100 percentage steam otherwise reduces the efficiency so a good boiler which does not having any type of the sludge like substances okay next disadvantages of scale scale act as the thermal insulator it decreases the efficiency of the boiler so any crack developed on the scale leads to explosion explosion means uh the boiler uh, to at uh, one particular time uh, explosive occur okay the crack is formed inner walls of the boiler to form the explosion so damage of the boiler so a very good boiler does not have any type of the scale producing substance also because in that scale it acts as a thermal insulator thermal insulator means it is the inhibit to the heat into the water uh, to form the uh, crack in, inside the boiler wall to form the uh, explosion so in that particular stage uh, the boiler which does not working efficiency so to form the explosive nature so a very good boiler does not have any scale producing substances also next how can we prevent the sludge and the scale so in the sludge formation can be prevented by using softened water that means the before water feed into the boiler we have to treat the water outside of the boiler then after the treatment water after the treated water we have to insert the boiler we have to safely uh, handled by the boiler so the first point is by using the treated water second point is the sludge can also be removed by blow down operation blow down operation means by passing the treated water or pure water into the boiler to remove the impurity water that means concentrated water highly impurity water from the boiler is called as a blow down operation so the blow down operation means is the process of removing a portion of concentrated water by fresh water frequently from the boiler during steam production suppose unfortunately we have to add the untreated water into the boiler by adding the treated water that means softened water inside the boiler the concentrated salt can be removed at the bottom of the boiler that is called as the blow down operation so the simply you have to write the blow down operation means by adding the fresh water to remove the impurity water from the boiler is called blow down operation by adding the softened water inside the boiler to remove the impurity water is called as the blow down operation okay next how can we prevent the scale producing substances the scale formation can be prevented by dissolving using acids like hcl h2so4 hno3 so by adding the concentrated hcl hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid inside the boiler uh, with the help of brush uh, 
to remove the scale producing or scrubbers to remove the scale producing substance inside the boiler then scale formation can be removed by external treatment and internal treatment external treatment means the water before add into the boiler we have to treatment by externally that means ion exchange process geolite process or reverse osmosis process at any type of the process we have to add into the water and purify the water after the purification we have to add the water into the uh, boiler directly that is called as the external treatment the external treatment means the water before add into the boiler to remove the all impurities from outside of the boiler that is called as the external treatment then internal treatment internal treatment means uh, suppose we have to unfortunately add the water inside the boiler by adding some chemical compounds uh, inside the boiler directly to remove the scale and sludge producing substances that is called internal treatment so in that internal treatment we are called four types uh, different conditioning methods so carbonate conditioning phosphate conditioning uh, sodium aluminate conditioning calgan conditioning colloidal conditioning so based on the chemical compounds adding directly into the boiler these are called as the different methods so the internal methods uh, also which is used to remove the scale producing substance inside the boiler that means the scale can be converted into the sludge then sludge which is easily removed from the boiler that is called internal treatment then they can also be removed by applying thermal shock a scrapers or wire brush etc by adding uh, some uh, scrapers and wire brush then by using the current to given the thermal shock into the scale then that uh, scale can be converted into the sludge like substances then easily removed by the uh, boiler so these are all the various prevention methods of the sludge and scale okay next important is the requirements of boiler feed water so the boiler feed water must have the following requirements so if the uh, suppose if the water having any type of the impurities like the hardness so the less than 0.2 ppm or are available or without the hardness is the uh, very good uh, the soda alkalinity is in the range of 0.15 to 1 ppm range so uh, above the range which will be affected the boiler then caustic alkalinity range is 0.15 to 0.45 ppm ppm means parts per million that means 1 milligram of the solute dissolved in 1 liter part of the solvent then excess soda ash 0.3 to 0.55 ppm then dissolved gases like oxygen carbon dioxide is the 0 ppm so the dissolved gases means if the gases dissolved which easily in the water that is called as the dissolved gases so these are all the basic requirements of the boiler feed water okay next specification disadvantages boiler feed water should have zero hardness if there is any hardness present in that the water scales and the sludge will be produced which prevents efficient heat transfer okay so the very good boiler does not uh, the should be free from the any type of the scale and the sludge then it must be free from dissolved gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide so it leads to boiler corrosion suppose if the water containing oxygen and carbon dioxide so the, to form the boiler corrosion 
so the boiler corrosion can be avoided by using the not containing dissolved gases water then it should be free from suspended impurities suppose suspended impurities available in the water to form the wet steam so i will give the definition for the wet steam in the later then the boiler water boiler should be free from the dissolved salts like hydroxide alkalinity carbon alkalinity and bicarbonate alkalinity suppose this type of alkalinity present in that water it will be produced caustic embrittlement which causes brittlement of the boiler parts i will give the definition for the caustic embrittlement in the later in the following slides then it should be free from oil and turbidity suppose if the water containing any type of the oil and turbidity which produce priming and foaming it should be free from total dissolved salts suppose if the water containing any dissolved salts produce priming and foaming and caustic embrittlement priming foaming caustic embrittlement uh, definitions i will tell later in the following slides okay now we are going to the priming and foaming priming is the process of production of wet steam wet steam means uh, bubble like substances form in the above the surface of the water so the priming is caused by the high steam velocity very high water level in the boiler sudden boiling of the water very poor boiler design so these four conditions are the to form the priming in the water how can we prevent the high uh, priming of the water we have to reduce the velocity lower level in the water by the boiler slow boiling of the water so avoid the sudden boiling then we have to match the boiler design with the effectively okay how can we prevent the priming of the boiler by controlling the velocity of the steam keeping the water level into the lower using treated water and a good boiler design so these are all the various prevention methods of the priming then we are going to the foaming foaming means to form the lather so the formation of stable bubbles above the surface of the water is called foaming foaming means lather producing so the foaming is caused by due to the presence of the oil and the grease into the water then presence of the finely divided particles how can you prevent the foaming foaming can be prevented by adding coagulants like sodium aluminate aluminum hydroxide so these two chemicals are the very very important to remove the foaming the another name of the sodium aluminate and aluminum hydroxide are the uh, coagulants okay then adding anti foaming agents like synthetic polyamide so the synthetic polyamide is a very good example for the anti foaming agents so the synthetic polyamide which reduces the foaming occurring in the water okay then we are going to the caustic embrittlement intercrystalline cracking brittlement means cracking the caustic embrittlement means intercrystalline cracking of the boiler metal so the boiler water which usually contains a small proportion of the sodium carbonate in high pressure boilers the sodium carbonate undergoes the decomposition to give the sodium hydroxide so if the water containing the sodium carbonate in the sodium carbonate react with the boiler water to form the sodium hydroxide and carbon dioxide the sodium hydroxide flows into the minute hair crack on the Uh, crevices usually present on the boiler material so by capillary action it dissolves the surrounding 
area of ions and sodium ferroate. Okay, so the first reaction sodium carbonate which produces the sodium hydroxide in the sodium hydroxide react with the boiler metal. Uh, boiler metal is mainly uh, uh, made up of the iron content. So then that iron content form as the Fe. So then the Fe react with the sodium hydroxide to form the sodium ferroate. That means Na2FeO2 that is the sodium ferroate then to free from the hydrogen gas. So in that hydrogen gas to produce the minute hair crack on the boiler that is called boiler crack or otherwise it is called as the embrittlement of the boiler or a caustic embrittlement the another name of the soda is called as the uh, caustic so due to the uh, soda the boiler cracking is occurs so that it is called as the sodium embrittlement or a Caustic embrittlement. Okay. So the causes of caustic embrittlement, the boiler parts, particularly stressed parts like bends, joints, rivets, etc., causing even failure of the boiler. So in that bend and the joints rivets, some of the salts are deposited on that to form the uh, sodium ferroate Na2FeO2 and to form the hydrogen gas and that hydrogen gas cracks easily on the boiler wall to uh, produce the caustic embrittlement and how can we prevent the caustic embrittlement the caustic embrittlement can be prevented by using sodium phosphate as softening agent instead of sodium carbonate so the sodium phosphate is the very good treatment chemical for the prevention of the caustic embrittlement then by adding tannin lignin to the boiler water uh, which blocks the hair cracks tannin lignin is the very good uh, preventive agents of the uh, caustic embrittlement okay so today we were discussed the various uh, troubles of the boiler feed water Water is that the boiler feed water. The water fed into the boiler is called as the boiler feed water. And the boiler should be free from the impurities. Suppose the uh, water containing any type of the harness producing salt or impurities, and then another like uh, contaminants which will be uh, produce the various troubles into the boiler. In the troubles, we are called as the boiler troubles. What are the boiler troubles? One is the sludge, then scale, priming, foaming, caustic embrittlement, boiler corrosion. So these are the various boiler troubles produced into the uh, boiler. So what is sludge? Sludge means loose precipitate. Scale means hard precipitate. Uh, how can we remove the sludge and the scale? The sludge which can be easily, uh, easily removed from the boiler by using the and treated water and blow down operation method and scale producing substance also removed by the internal treatment water and external treatment process then by adding the given the thermal shock scraps and uh, wire which is used to uh, acids like HCl, HNO3, HCSO4 uh, by removing the scale producing substances then priming means to production of the wet steam into the boiler is called as the priming so the priming also removed by some process then uh, foaming is the to formation of the stable bubbles above the surface of the water due to the grease oil like substances inside the water which can be easily removed by the some chemical methods then caustic embrittlement means uh, if the water containing any sodium carbonate salt which easily react with the water to form the sodium hydroxide in the sodium hydroxide react with the boiler material like Fe to form the sodium ferroate in the sodium ferroate we are called as the cracking like the H2 gas so the minute crack uh, produced inside the wall of the boiler which is called as the caustic embrittlement so in that caustic embrittlement can be removed by using the uh, sodium phosphate uh, conditioning and uh, adding the tannin and lignin into the boiler to uh, 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 remove the 
காஸ்டிக் எம்பிட்டல்மெண்ட்டு சப்ஸ்டன்சஸ் ஸோ தீஸ் ஆர் ஆல் தி வேரியஸ் ட்ரபுள்ஸ் ஆஃப் பாய்லர் ஃபீடு வாட்டர் ஸோ இந்த எக்ஸாமினேஷன் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் வியூ ஆஸ்க் த எயிட் மார்க் கொஷின் எக்ஸ்பிளைன் த டிஃப்ரெண்ட் டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் த பாய்லர் ட்ரபுள்ஸ் ஸோ யூ ஹாவ் டு எக்ஸ்பிளைன் ஒன் பை ஒன் ஓகே தேங்க்யூ